Today we will talk about gain staging and I know for sure that is going to be quite a painful topic because as the old saying goes, no pain, no gain. Let us start by exploring a couple of concepts that we have already introduced in a couple of previous videos, namely unity gain and saturation. We talk about unity gain when a signal that goes out of a circuit has the same amplitude that it had when it got in. If a circuit can reduce the amplitude of a signal down from unity gain, it is an attenuator. If it can increase it beyond the unity gain, it is an amplifier. Nearly all amplifiers are also attenuator, but it is not obvious that an attenuator is also an amplifier. The amplitude of an electronic sound within the circuit is the amplitude of a voltage fluctuation. Whenever a voltage fluctuation gets too wide for a circuit, it means that the components can no longer handle it. And if the circuit is properly engineered, such components will stall to the highest and lowest value they can produce. This circumstance is called saturation but it has also other names like overdrive, overload and so on and it basically describes what happens to our sound when the circuit can no longer handle it. Different components and different circuit design might react differently when the sound exceeds their limit and this defines the different distortion character that we can find in our modular synthesizer. This brief recap on the concepts of unity gain and saturation introduces another very important concept which is the distinction between gain and volume. If we approach the terms from a technical standpoint, they mean the same thing, which is increasing or reducing a signal's amplitude. However, if we approach the terms from a functional standpoint, the same amplitude increment or reduction bears dramatically different outcomes. We call gain the amplitude variation when a sound gets into the circuit, and we call volume the amplitude change when a sound gets out. The measurement unit that we use to calculate an amplitude variation is the decibel that we will see in another video. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below. For the reason introduced by the concepts of unity gain and saturation, it is possible to introduce to our sound a wide variety of amplitude changes and also, if desired, saturation colors while still retaining a usable volume. For example, if we increase the gain and reduce the volume, we might saturate the circuit but still have a very low output. Saturation and unity gain are highly intertwined. For example, if we have an electronic signal that has an amplitude of, say, 10 volts peak to peak, and we feed it through a circuit whose maximum amplitude, the maximum amplitude it can handle is only 2 volts peak to peak, we will have a highly saturated sound, but whose amplitude is even lower than the sound we started from. This is the case, for example, when we want to route our modular synthesizer through some effects pedal that are designed exclusively or primarily for electric guitars. Let's say that we want to route this modular synthesizer through this uh, guitar pedal over here, which is a reverb. So we patched the group send effect send output to the reverb input and the reverb output back into the group effects return. This is our patch and from here we control the amount of the sound that goes into the pedal and from here the amount of reverb that gets back into the group. Now to simplify the things we set the effect to be pre-fader so that if we mute the channel we can listen to the reverb sound alone and you can hear that if I add too much volume to the effect send I reach a point around here when I am overloading the reverb circuit you can hear the added distortion and past this point I am basically just having some noise So, instead I can, if I want more reverb, I can set my effect send to a point where it is not distorting the reverb and now I can use the effect return to compensate for the gain reduction. Now I 
can blend my original signal back in. Maybe that's too loud. The amplitude of a sound generically coming out of a Eurorack modular synthesizer is much higher than an electric guitar and so if we want to use those pedals we might need to attenuate the sound of our modular synth to make it usable by the pedal. Any louder signal will be just chopped and ignored, even for distortion pedals. But let's try the other way around, so instead of patching the modular synthesizer through a guitar pedal we would patch a guitar into the modular synthesizer and by doing so we can see that so if I patch my guitar straight into the CGM and I strum it we won't even hear anything from here except for what the my microphone is picking up so I can try to crank the gain all the way up but nothing is happening so I can add even more volume through the channel, the group, and the master. And we can see that something is barely moving right now. We would need to boost our guitar's signal with a lot of gain in order to make it usable by the modular synthesizer circuit. Unfortunately, for such purpose, we would need a module specifically designed for interfacing external equipment with our modular synthesizer, but we don't have it in our system here yet. Anyway, this would be the opposite case of the modular synthesizer through the guitar pedal. In this case, we would have an enormous gain increment with no saturation at all. We always need to adjust our signal to the tolerance of the circuit we want to run it to. And the space that a circuit has to be filled with sound is its headroom. Because no signal is loud or quiet per se. There aren't right gain values there are just appropriate ones. The art of gain staging is thus being able to identify the proper gain value. And we can draw a comparison also with the world of classical music. A piece of chamber music, for example, is written for a small group of musicians that should play it in a room, as the name suggests. If we listen to a chamber ensemble in a theater, for example, the sound might be too weak. I did it once and it wasn't a pleasant experience at all. Conversely, if we would try to squeeze a whole orchestra of 70 people in a tea room to play an orchestral piece, so written for a larger ensemble, we would be forced to listen it from across the door or even from the other room. In both scenarios, the signal is not proportioned to the circuit's headroom, which in this example is an actual room. It will thus result in a signal loss. So in one case the signal is too weak and in the other case it is distorted because we are listening it through a wall. A perfect way of demonstrating gain staging is through the CGM mixer where we can define the gain through the red VCA level knobs and the volume through the white faders. In the case of the stereo channel here, the red knobs defines the volume of the signal getting into the channel and the fader defines the volume of the sound getting out. So now I am I have this cable that goes straight into my audio interface and I can monitor for example the green sine wave and what I want to do now is demonstrating how gain and saturation and unity gain are correlated. Now if I patch my sine wave into the stereo channel and then let's set the faders down at the moment and then patch this cable through any output here which are semi-normal so I can use it in mono I can adjust the levels so that it roughly matches the amplitude I was having earlier which more or less is like this So this is more or less uh, unity gain and uh, as you can see I still have some room and I can push it a little bit further. 
Now I had to set this uh, uh, switch to the bottom, so the outputs here are post fader, which means that I can reduce the amplitude here and I can control the amplitude of my of the signal going to my audio interface through those two knobs here. If I set it to the upper position, this would have been uh, pre fader, so it would have been completely unaffected by this knob here. Now, I use the sine wave because to demonstrate what happens when we exceed these uh, um, the, the limits of the circuits. So what I want to do now is to set the channel back into post fader mode and then send the sine wave into the 3 to 1 which can add even more, a little bit of extra gain on top of what we can have on the CGM and set it roughly here which is quite above unity gain and then from here I want to come back to my channel there and set the input so that it doesn't saturate. Right now I want to set the output at the maximum level and then use this input knob here until I reach my reference level so to speak which is somewhere around here. And from this point on, I would like to reduce the amplitude through the fader and increase it through the input knob until I reach this result here. As you can see, I am not... Uh, my, my signal's amplitude is still the same or even lower but uh, the sound has changed quite a bit because now I am really overloading the circuit. From the oscilloscope, even if uh, there is some degree of waveform alteration due to the um, filtering of uh, our audio interface, you can see what happens when the signal gets beyond the limits of the circuit. It kind of squares, but it's not too much of an abrupt uh, chopping of the waveform because we put a lot of effort into designing the CGM saturation stage and it might be even a pleasant effect. The takeaway here is that distortion is not intrinsically bad, but sometimes it might be a desirable effect. However, we must always be aware of the sound that we have in mind and the circuit that we are using to find the most appropriate gain staging values. We must keep in mind that two sounds will sound twice as loud as one sound, four sounds four times, and so on. Translated into an electronic circuit, the more sounds we have, the more headroom they will take. And we must keep this in mind when we are using a circuit to mix multiple signals. So right now we have four triangle waves. I changed the waveform because uh, I used also Falistri as a generator and Falistri doesn't provide a sine wave. None of the channel is saturating and uh, the group is not saturating either. I am monitoring everything through the master one. So what happens now is that I have this, this sum that goes into the group and I have this knob here that defines the amplitude going of the signal going to the masterone. And I have also a visual cue of the saturating stage here. So right now I can try to do the same uh, thing so I can increase the amplitude of every channel going to the master one. You can see that the quad stereo channel is already a little bit uh, to a critical level because sometimes when all the waveforms are in phase we have a circuit saturation so we are close to finishing the headroom on the quad stereo channel 
At this point, I might even play with the group saturation so I can use the masterone knob to tame the amplitude increment and saturate the group as well so even if now I am having more or less the same amplitude as I was having before I am also adding another saturation stage which is after the input of every channel so every single section is not saturating but their output is and if I want I can even reduce my CGM and make also every channel saturate a little bit. Now if you are a particularly reckless musician you may wonder but if a circuit doesn't provide me with enough gain can I just patch the output back into the input to win a free round of amplification? The answer is quite no but we can try nonetheless. The problem is that we are indeed amplifying the signal again but we are also doing it again and again and again and again. The result is a heavy circuit saturation that may result into an emphasis and exaggeration of certain frequencies according to the circuit's design. This process is called feedback and can even lead to a self-oscillation of the circuit even if nothing is passed to the input. The self-oscillation is basically the most extreme consequence of a feedback and it basically emphasizes a circuit's characteristic frequency so much that it starts resonating with itself and becomes an actual sound. With some mixer this technique is possible and it is called uh, no input mixing board. For example if we pick the stereo channel output and patch it back into the input with this gain setting here can achieve a rough tone which of course is quite limited because we designed the CGM to be more precise in its response and to avoid circumstances like that. But we can combine it with uh, for example the same thing but did with the quad stereo channel. these kind of drones over here. We can have a similar trick by patching the effect sends back into the channels, for example one here and one here and play with their volume. without saying that if we have uh, a melody like this one patched to our stereo channel or quad stereo channel we can use the same feedback trick to generate an extra distortion for example by patching the channel output back to this input here or the effect send So there are plenty of options that can work also with the stereo channel by setting it to mix like this and setting this to pre-fader mode. We can define through the crossfade here the amount of saturation that we want while staying within one channel. But now we must remember that we are exploring something that the device was not designed to do first and foremost. 
I think that we can have it here for today. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you next time.